Let's take a, a look at the two wrong views of sex. There's, a, there's more than this, but these are the two that tend to predominate in our culture. Many Christians demonize sex. I'm talking about some legalistic denominations in the sense that they, it's, you know, it's mostly negative. We don't discuss it. We repress everything, and it's not spiritual. It's just something we do for procreation, and you keep it quiet. You don't talk about it, right? The culture, on the other hand, goes the other extreme, and it deifies the sex. I can't live without it. It's my identity. I won't repress everything. I'm going to express everything. But paradoxically, they'll say it's only physical, that sex is just physical. So there's no other consequences. It's just a physical act, two people coming together. If they want to have, they want to do this, as long as they don't, what's the word? Hurt somebody else, right? We'll get into this later, but it's just a physical act. Both of these extremes, I think, are wrong. So what does God say about sex? Well, you might be surprised to discover that the first command God gave to anybody was to have sex. Did you know that? <laughs> Sex is created and encouraged by God. Here's what he said. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase, or be fruitful and multiply. In number, fill the earth and subdue it. That's the first command. And you have, you have some Christians saying, well, we ought not be talking about this. We ought to repress this. We ought to, well, no, it's a gift. And it's actually a command as well. If we're going to be imagers of God, we have to create. Because God creates. We're imagers, so we create. We have families, and we build cities, and we build communities. We're imagers of God. We're his ambassadors here on earth. So we're to create. This is the first command, and we're made in his image. That's what it means to be made in his image, to actually do his bidding here on earth. Paul says in uh, one of his letters, I think it's 2 Corinthians, 1st or 2nd Corinthians, where he says that God makes his appeal through you. In other words, God puts us on earth so we can appeal to others. We can be his representatives, his ambassadors here on earth. So we're images of God in that sense. So in our first, in his first command to us, he talks about sex. Now, there's an entire book on the Bible about sex. What is it? We can't even read it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible's rated R, ladies and gentlemen. So if you were to sit down and read the Song of Solomon, which is really about the sexual love of, one, of a man for a woman, and you read that to your wife or your husband or whoever, you'd probably be embarrassed reading it. Okay, but it's, it's in there. It's in there. Uh, even the Proverbs have it. You know, the Proverbs talk a lot about sex. A lot of times it's stay away from it, but here's, here's a, a verse that might become your favorite verse in the entire Bible. Are you ready? Here it is. This is Proverbs chapter 5. Drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. Should your springs overflow in the streets, your streams of water in the public squares, let them be yours alone, never to be shared with strangers. May your fountain be blessed, and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe, a graceful deer. May her breast satisfy you always. May you ever be intoxicated with her love. We said that on the NRB network. It's in the Bible, all right, right there. So... You guys that don't memorize the Bible, I think from now on, you'll probably be memorizing Proverbs 5, 15 to 19. There it is right there, okay?